Hello, it's Mary Beth Shaw from Stencil Girl Products, and I am here to show you progress that I am making on my September 2023 creative practice. So this is a daily, well, it's supposed to be a daily creative practice. I'll have to, I think I confessed previously, I tend to do it all at once, but the point is I am doing it every month and that makes me super happy. I'm, you know, almost through September and I have one of these for every month of the year, which thrills me. I've never been so committed to a um, creative practice like this. There are, I don't know, there's a couple things about it I really like. I really like working on the manila folder. There's something about it. It just seems a little beefier. Um, I like the size of it. I like the folding. The folded pages in and out thrill me. And um, I don't know. I just never would have dreamed that I would like this as much as I do. So let me show you where I am right now. And then I want to show you a quick technique that I'm pretty excited about. All right, so you recall that this background setup I had painted before. I painted all 12 of those at the end of last year when I was making the journal. And I hope you also recall this is a class I took from Andrea Shebelow of A Work of Heart. So I always want to make sure she gets credit for this. It's her genius idea, and I don't know if she's going to teach it again this year. It's probably on her website, I'm guessing. But anyway, so the background was done. Now, that being said, I come in every month, and I put my date at the beginning of the month, and then I added this right here. This is a little rub-on that I got. Um, I have bought this from Tina Walker. I, I really just like it. It's from her Etsy shop, and you know how I love all things mechanical and architecture and all architectural and all of that stuff. So I just thought it'd be cool on there. I added a few more colors and so forth. I think probably if I were going to do it again, I don't know that I would paint the cover of every month for the whole year. I'm not quite sure. What I did was I did them all in pretty much the same color scheme. So now I, I've, felt a little locked into the color scheme. That's all. So anyway, all right. So this is the outside cover and these are the two inside covers. These started blank. I'm working on them right now. I don't have much done as you can see, but I'm working on them. All right. This one I've been focusing on and I have wanted to involve more collage in the pages because I went back and looked through some of the pages I've done thus far and the pages I like the best are the ones that are have a lot of collage detail in them so I want to show you what I've done so far so here are the two when you open it up these are the two facing pages not sure they're done yet but I'm I'm pretty happy with how they're looking I think I want to go back and add some line work on this black I use the um, so flat, the matte acrylic for that, and I would like to add some line work in like a um, a jelly roll pen or something that's made to write on black. I think that might be really cool. I really am enjoying how I have all of this collage piled up on here. I think that's the look that I was finding in some of my older pages that I enjoyed, and I wanted to get more of that in in this um, section. So then when you open it up, this is not finished yet either, but this is a more organic version of what I've done here, which I consider kind of grid-like. I kept it very much, um, you know, vertical, horizontal, and layered up square, rectangular parts. Now this one, I did not so much, and this piece up here, this was from this hunk of tissue that I made. And what I did was I took the black lines, I just glued these down randomly. That piece and this piece started the page. And then I took the black line 
and I, I do this so, so much in my journal and I extended it. And then like this one here, I extended it. And it gave me this very bizarre organic shape that was kind of exciting to me. And I decided to just go with it. So I started using a mix of collage and paint to fill this shape. And I'm not really sure where I'm going next, but I want to show you, it's this part right here that I'm focusing on that I wanna talk more about, and I'm gonna show you how I did this, because I've been enjoying the process of making that little collage bit, and also the process of using it. And one other thing I did, would like to point out, this part right here is a textured page. Here was what I tore it off of. It was something I had made with a stencil using texture paste on a handmade paper. And I just thought it looked really cool. And it feels amazing. It has this very cool texture as well. All right, so let's set that aside and I wanna show you how I made the other part. All right, here is that part, part of it that was glued down. It's a piece of tape and it is something I made. I don't remember who I saw making this. I wish I could give them credit, um, but Somebody on Instagram, I think, was making this tape, and I thought, oh, that's a good idea, because you know how, um, sorry about that, that was a cat running into the light. You know how I make these tapes where I pick up just pieces of uh, paint that are on, like, my palette or my gel plate or something like that, so you know I make these, right, and then I tape them up in my studio, Actually, I might use some of those in this collage too. Well, I love this idea of using tape and having them on hand. It, to me, it reminds me of like the snippet rolls that people are making. And I'm not a, a sewer, so I haven't jumped on board with that, but I love the way they look. And so this is kind of like a snippet roll for somebody that doesn't have sewing ability, I think. So all you need is um, just a thing of shipping tape. And I'm gonna just tear a hunk off. Now, as you know, shipping tape, one side is, you know, not sticky and one side's super sticky. So I am gonna stick the shipping tape up here so that I can just get it under control. But as I'm looking at my my paper here, I'm wondering if any of this will come up. I gotta try it, I'm sorry, I'm just suddenly, I veered off, let's brayer that down. Oh, look at that, it did come off, I like it. I didn't anticipate that to happen, that's kind of fun. I just had a, that popsicle stick here from doing that rubbing, and um, that makes it nice. All right, this is cool. I like it, like it, like it. Um, let's see if I can get some more parts. You know, there's so many ways to make interesting tapes, right? Now, normally what I do, the reason I work like this and make it a mess is that I cut these parts up and I use them later on. So that is exactly why I work that way. Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm still gonna tape it up here. I've got it to the taped to the bottom of this is my tripod and it's taped and so this is very sticky sticking up okay and all I'm gonna do is the other side of it actually I did this backwards all right well we'll keep going on this one and then I'll tell you this is gonna be the good side of this was just gonna be glossy and so that means you would put your parts face down and just stick them right on there and you would eventually be creating a tape, right? I believe you've probably seen people doing this before and I've seen this for years, but what I haven't seen for years is the opposite and maybe it's been around and I just haven't seen it. So let me tear another piece of tape and then 
this is going to be the back, the non-sticky part, all right? Because this is going to make it a heck of a lot easier to store because that's the part that makes it so hard to store. So you're going to use the sticky and you're going to put your scrap pieces facing up and make sure that they're glued down on your sticky. Like this piece has a straight edge, so I'm seeing if I can get it right against the tape. I like it if I can do that. I also like some pieces that sometimes they like are hanging off the tape. I like that too. I like to leave some blanks in it so that when you go to glue it down, it's not even necessarily all covered with tape. You know, maybe there's um, clear parts that show the underneath of what you know you're gluing it on top of and I really like that when it happens and here's the thing you know how it is when you're working with collage or at least it is for me I always have these like little hunks of things laying around that it's like I was gonna use them but I didn't use it or I had to tear it down to size and this is a great time to get out a little piece of tape and use it right I um and it is tape, so it gets sticky, right? Sticky, sticky, sticky. But even this, like these tiny little parts. And when you use them like this, and something that you glue down, let me pull this back out. This is the tape right here. These are all the little parts that are on it. And it just looks so cool. It's like anybody looking at that is going to go, oh, wow, that's really interesting. Here's another piece over here. And I put an extra hunk of collage up there on it. Um, oh, gosh, this is going to be so hard to see. But there is a little, I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. I'm going to bring it up closer. But there's a tiny little clear piece here. That's a clear hunk of tape. And so this is the background and you're seeing it peek through right there. And that's the kind of thing that is very cool if you leave some clear parts in, in there, right? And I have not had trouble making the tape stick since it is glossy. Um, I haven't had trouble with that. You know, when I put it down into my journal it seems to be working okay if you did have trouble you could paint some matte medium on the that clear glossy part and then that way when you go to um, stick it down it'll already have a little bit of tooth so you could do matte medium you could do clear gesso heck you could do white gesso if you wanted i mean if you had clear parts you could paint another color gesso or paint behind it. I mean, there's so many different options, right? That's what makes it fun. So here is how this is coming along. It's just this little piece of interesting tape. And I like how you could put this into collage and it just instantly looks so much more complex than you might expect. And for me, that is the kind of thing that I like to achieve in, in the parts that I make and also, you know, in the work that I make. I like complexity in it and I like to achieve that um, through different ways all the time. I. You know, I do get hung up on things that I do over and over, but I'll tell you, I love the idea of developing new things and coming up with new ideas all the time. That's a lot of fun for me as well. See, I want to pull this up, but then I know that it's going to be on the wrong side, like this piece we have going, which I think for this one, what I will do with this one is I'm going to finish it and then I will paint some matte medium on top of this or just wait until I use it in collage and then paint some matte medium on top of it either way. But it certainly is not going to go to waste, that's for sure. Now, uh, let's look back at this one I've previously made. 
you'll see that there are little fluffy like edges here that aren't totally glued down. I sort of like that look, honestly, so I decided to just leave it that way when I was gluing it down. And I did just this little hunk so fast. It was unbelievable. And I just left it. When I was putting it in my journal, and as I was adding some painted parts, I, um, I was accidentally folding it over and so forth. So you could, um, you know, choose to glue that down with a glue stick if you wanted. But anyway, just another one of my silly but interesting ideas for making custom tapes to use in your work. And it, look at that, even the back side of it looks cool. You could use it either way. But I do like the front side. I like the idea of seeing the actual collage parts in their raw, original, you know, format. And that's what's so exciting about this for me, is that they turn out that way. So get some clear tape, play around. I can't wait to see what y'all do with it. Thanks so much for watching.